Good afternoon. Welcome to the faith community of St. Dennis and our celebration of Mass today. Today, we celebrate the first Sunday of Advent. Our presenter at this Mass is Father Bill and Deacon George. We remember in a special way this Mass, Julius Parsik, Joseph Petrosky, and Tina O'Donnell. As we begin our celebration, please stand, open your hymnal, and join us in our Advent hymn, number four. In those days, in that time, 
I will raise up for David a just shoot. He shall do what is right and what is just in the land. In those days, Judah shall be safe, and Jerusalem shall be well secure. This is what they shall call her.
reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Lord, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, There will be signs in the sun, and the moon, and the stars, and on earth nations will be in dismay, perplexed by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will die of fright in anticipation of what is coming upon the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in the cloud with power and great glory. But when these signs begin to happen, stand erect and raise your heads, because your redemption is at hand. Beware that your hearts do not become drowsy from carousing and drunkenness and the anxieties of daily life, and that day catch you by surprise like a trap. For that day will assault everyone who lives on the face of the earth. Be vigilant at all times, and pray that you have the strength to escape the tribulations that are imminent, and to stand before the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord.
certainly we just had Thanksgiving, and I mean, we have a lot of fun and games on Thanksgiving Day, you know, but I mean, was it carousing like the Lord was saying? I don't think so, right? So the thing is, is that, and the understanding though here is that, you know, that it's something that in the, the uh, kind of self-centered kind of way of life is that then you're just you know, taking care of your own satisfaction and your own, you know, it's that self-centeredness of that, you know, the only thing in life is, is really, is like me being, you know, me satisfying me and my needs, really to the exclusion of paying attention to everybody else and everything else in the world, right? Where God is calling me into the moments of life. And so we're distracting ourselves, if you will, by that self-centeredness of, of, you know, pleasure and, and uh, you know, and, and taking me off guard about, you know, what does it mean in my discipleship? The other one is anxiety. It's also a self-centeredness. What makes me worry? And, and not looking at God again in the picture, and then being uh, looking at myself in a way of the, what we, you know, the nickname of nasal gaze. Like, you know, oh, what was me? Or what worried and anxiety about me? Whereas God wants to lift up my head, you know, and look to the Lord for when comes my help, is what the scriptures say. So they are both that allow us to be drowsy or cause a drowsiness, if you will, meaning not being attentive, not being vigilant. Because what does vigilant mean? Noticing details, in particular, especially, because I looked it up on that, you know, to, you know, have that. Uh, some of those great people, like I looked at the definition of, I took that page from them people today. So the thing is, is that um, it is being careful and noticing details, especially with possible danger. Because if I'm in drunkenness, kind of browsiness, browsing, and that browsing or whatever, is that then I might not be attentive to the danger of what that's causing in my life. Or the anxieties. It might be so worried about the anxiety and worrying to you know that that absorbs power, right? It absorbs energy in your life. You only get so much in a day. So the thing is, is, is that like sucking you dry in the anxiety? And the thing is, that that takes me away too from noticing God in my in the moments of my day, which actually can offer where the help is coming from the Lord who made heaven and earth, right? Who are looking up to the mountains, if you will. The song. You know, that's the thing about noticing the details. You know, we, we could be so anxious and anxiety ridden is that we're looking at the ways in which God is offering us help in the moment. There's that, you know, joke everybody heard about the, you know, floodwaters coming and then, you know, hey, you better come, the floodwaters are coming and then they're like, no, God's going to help me. And then, you know, the floodwaters reach high and then they go upstairs and it's like um, somebody sends a boat, you know, no, oh, no, no, God's going to help me. And then they go to the roof and then a helicopter. No, no, God's going to help me. And then the person like drowns, and then they go to God, and he's like, I sent you the, you know, the first flirt of people, send you a boat, send you a helicopter. But if you're all worried about, if we're all worried about the anxiety, and you know, I'm at the head of the, you know, I could watch my that all the time, I have to be consciously aware of that in my life. To cut that out. Because why? God is present. You know, God wants me to pay attention and be attentive to what's going on. Certainly in that to me, as you know, I'm a big proponent because it is one of the big uh, four acts of prayer of thanksgiving. If I don't notice the things in my day, then how can I be thankful for them? And how can I realize God is present in my life, even if things are, you know, like, you know, little dumpster fire life? So the thing is, is that I have to be attentive to what God is moving in my life and to be noticing those details, especially as we enter into this season of prayer is to notice God in the scriptures. You know, we have tons of uh, takeaways for you today, right? Uh, three different kinds of meditations a day. Just to take five minutes, seven minutes of your day, maybe during the time when you're having breakfast or, or, or lunch, uh, and then just, you know, reading through that and saying, oh yeah, let I notice this, and it's helpful to me. It's a word of the day from God, right, to inspire us. So it's important to see because that drowsiness takes us away from what God really wants in our life, and it is to, to know that God's presence, right? For me, those uh, the the the, um, the readings today um, is more about than that understanding of, of what should be our attitude of going into this, you know, in, in, in our life. And as Saint Paul says in the reading there, he says, you know, the attitude really 
right, is about love, right? That's what that's what it is uh, increased and abound in love for one another, right? So as to strengthen our hearts, right? May the Lord make you increase and abound in love. That's how then strengthens your heart against drunkenness and drowsiness and against anxiety is other centeredness. Love is giving of self to other. Whereas the drunken craziness and anxiety is really more wrapped around, I'm starting to be more wrapped around me and not paying attention to God and others in my life. The thing is, is like this love lets me look out. You know, it lets me look out into, um, and it is a discipline, it's a virtue. God gives it to us in baptism in order to communicate self at a deepest level of humankind, different than animal. So the thing is that it's a, it's a gift that we are given that's a transcendent gift to say, how am I going to be with and for others in this situation? Because the thing is, like, as you know, there's stressors that happen and, and stuff in my life too, of course, blah, blah, blah. But the thing is, is that if I'm, if I'm well, I'm, I'm able to curtail the anxiety by being with and for others, stepping into the breach, so to speak, and being there with and for others. So he says that that's what strengthens your heart, is to know you're here for and with others, for and with God, for and with yourself. <laughs> right? Don't forget yourself in this situation. And that's how we become blameless and holy and blameless in holiness before God, is by being uh, by being God's children, in deed and in fact, by being you know, loving, by being out there with others, by paying attention to the details in life. We can be distracted and self-centered at different moments. These things occur. But the thing is, is that we have to refresh our memory each and every day. The season refreshes our memory about how can I be then um, uh, not drowsy, but alert, being vigilant. Because then I'm more attuned to get ahead of any troubles that might happen. Because I recognize the behaviors in my life uh, that are not good. And look to the ways in which I can be with and for others in a way then then I am um, at more at peace and more effective, right, in being the disciple and uh, the son or daughter of God that He calls us to be. So we pray then uh, to look at that, uh, to be vigilant, right, at all times, as Jesus says, uh, not becoming drowsy, but rather having that attitude that we see in that second reading, which is and praying for the grace that God give us to increase and abound in love, to notice and to be ahead of any dangers in my life for myself and the life of those around us, noticing God's presence and uh, being thankful for that, noticing the, the ways in which God is moving me, right, in my spiritual journey uh, to await God's coming to me, right, not just at Christmas, uh, but in the moments of my life uh, in which God wishes that we all be one. <clears throat> so now, at this time, uh, we have our blessing of our week. So let us pray.
May God bestow upon them gifts and talents for the service of others, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who feel alone or abandoned, may God be their refuge and bring them abiding peace, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Inspired by the example of the Blessed Mother, may we, like Mary, have the courage to say yes to God's gift of human life, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For this faith community in this Advent season, May God inspire us to grow ever more deeply in the ways of His love, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick of our parish, may we support them in their illnesses by our caring, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all who have died, whose names and faces we now pause and remember. This evening we remember William O'Brien. May God give him, as well as our loved ones, eternal peace in heaven. With all the angels and saints, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those anxieties we brought here this day. Strengthen each of us in body, mind, and spirit, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. God of hope and of light, your Son taught us that way to you. Listen to our prayers and ask that we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. As our gifts are presented, please join us in our October hymn, number 493. Keep a look east, number 493. <laughs> So with the angels and archangels, with thrones, dominions, 
and all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim.
anticipated, the prophet as we pray, for even now, as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and hold fast to what endures through Christ our Lord. Amen. Alright, so uh, we enter into our season then of Advent and all the happenings that we have. Please see uh, the back and take advantage of the Advent information we have on the back table. Uh, also, we have a um, in our Paris Bulletin and the website, a Facebook page, uh, we have all the information for what's coming up uh, to set aside some time for yourself uh, for different um, opportunities that we'll have, right, for, um, for families, uh, for individuals, right, for adults. So, uh, to please look at the calendar for that. Uh, this uh, next weekend, the Catholic Daughters will be selling up poinsettias and wreaths after our fall masses, right? That funds their good works. So the money from that they use for uh, their good works, really, uh, that they give out. So uh, the order forms are in today's bulletin. So uh, to support them and to decorate, uh, prepare for Christmas at your house. Also then, uh, this, uh, Thursday, December 5th, at 11 and 7 in the church, uh, there will be an adult faith formation discussion on Carmelite Christmas poetry. So it's like Christmas with the Carmelites this year. Uh, so we are doing uh, two uh, different offerings uh, for uh, on our theme, right, the gift of God within, uh, using Carmelites, uh, the, the men and women saints of that particular quarter. And so uh, December 5th, at 11 a.m. and 7 p.m. is our first of two offerings, uh, and so all are invited for that. Next Saturday is our toy drive. Ready, great? Right? So that's uh, December 7th from 11 to 2. So we're thankful for those who have already dropped off toys, but we're hoping that you come to the actual event as well. It is a, uh, a, a Faith and Blue Initiative meeting. Uh, we're working together with uh, the law enforcement from Mount Swan as well as in Seabird, as we have in the past uh, three years. I think this is our third uh, year doing that. And also with the other Christian uh, churches in our area, right? To raise toys, uh, to collect toys, but also to build community. So come on out for the fun and festivity, right? Just to drop off the toy and to share some time together. Uh, and that will be next Saturday from 11 to 2. Also, if you haven't picked anything from the Giving Tree, we're actually going to take a peek at uh, one of the tags. Uh, we're helping several uh, groups. Uh, the list is in the bulletin of who we're helping and how. And then also for you to bring back the, uh, the donation of whatever it is, uh, unwrapped, uh, and we ask that donation is the 15th. So it is separate from our toy drive, right? Uh, toy drive is next week. There are some toys on the tree uh, that uh, those tags are to be delivered by the 15th. Right, so we don't have any toys, uh, tags, but toy drivers said that separate. Also then, um, as we uh, enter into the season as well, I uh, look forward to the opportunities for reconciliation that we have on Saturdays, as well as uh, dropping confessions. That's another way to spiritually, right, uh, cleanse us, uh, renew ourselves for the new year. But just to see, really, I think, to, uh, to think of the new and uh, new way in which God is inviting us into this new year of grace. I'm uh, thankful for the nice cool weather, uh, and it's uh, December after all in New Jersey. The Lord be with you. And, and we have a blessing for the season. Our heads we pray for God's blessing. May the Almighty and merciful God, by whose grace you have placed your faith in the first coming of his only begotten Son, and yearn for his coming again, sanctify you by the radiance of Christ's advent, and enrich you with his blessings. Amen. Amen. As you run the race of this present life, may God make you firm in faith, joyful in hope, and active in charity. Amen. So rejoicing now with devotion at the Redeemer's coming in the flesh, you may be endowed with the rich reward of eternal life when he comes again in majesty. Amen. Amen.